this is Eddie Smith, and uh, I'm in the Metro Navy. It's 1956, and I'm having, having up the sea. We're traveling down along the Tamer now, ready to join my ship in time of Fox. And there's my ship, a merchant band, in time of Fox. I'm ready to go aboard. There's one of my new equipments on the ship with me. We'll be sailing together. And shortly we'll be letting go the ropes and setting sail. And away we go now. Taking in the ropes and now we're at sea. And we're in the Bay of Biscay. Well, there is a severe gale blowing up. The ship is pitching and tossing around. And the decks are a rush. And there you can see a Russian cargo boat that's being tossed around by the sea as well. We're a bit faster than that, we just passed it. We'll shortly be entering the Mediterranean and uh, the weather will get a lot better then. The seagulls are uh, looking for food. And here we are now in the Mediterranean, and we're off Turkey, which is uh, in the Garden Isles, and we're heading up to the Caspian Sea, to Romania. This is Istanbul, that's the citadel in Istanbul, there's a Turkish fishing boat coming in, another one of our shipmates there. See the weather is clearing up now, the sky, the rainbows come up, and the sea is blue and calm. And there's an able seaman now checking through the lifeboats to see that all the gear is correct. He's a watchkeeper and he's off watch now. Checking through some uh, fire extinguishers to see they're working correctly. As fire extinguishers uh, are extremely important on a tanker huh? because of the risk of fire. Tightening them up. And there is the deck crew going out on deck. And there's another watchmate who's off duty, showing off his kimono. That's my watch, during the time, 9 o'clock, starting work. And uh, the men are now trunging out on the deck. The sun is quite strong now, and it's uh, very hot. And uh, another watchkeeper now, lying down in a hammock. Having a bit of a rest in the shade. He's having a bit of a read. There's nothing much to do on the ship. No television. We had a film once a week. That's about it. Oh, we are going out on the deck. All getting brown now. It's 110 in the shade. As I watch again now, saying 11 o'clock, it's time to come in for a cup of tea and a smoke. The wax got so hot that you can't stand still in one place. Or will burn your feet. It's sun is so bright that uh, it's uh, difficult to film in it. There's a bosun coming in, he's just brought the man in. 
and there's the rest of the men coming in. If anybody who sees this film recognizes their cell phone, then I'd be grateful if they could contact me. That is me then. My email address is Raceland Tema Park at tuskily.co.uk. This is Romania we're off now, a place called Constanza. Remember, Romania was part of the Soviet Union and the Iron Curtain was still up. There's a Russian cargo boat unloading there. And there you see the great Romanian Navy. Not so great, actually. And there's a Greek tanker that's been in and unloaded oil. And here we are now in the Suez Canal. We're going through the Suez Canal. One side of the Suez Canal, the Egyptian side, is all rich, wealthy houses. And then when you switch the course and look at the other side of the ship, you'll find shacks and poverty. Living in mud huts. And this is a place called Luxor on the Great Lakes. It's a luxury holiday resort in Egypt where President Nasser used to take his holidays. You see super tankers anchored in the Great Lakes. They have to anchor here in order to pass each other because the canal is not wide enough for the ships to pass. So they, you have to come up into the lakes and uh, cross over there. That was an Arab boat. If we turn around now, the ship is uh, getting ready to get up steam and set sail to go through the rest of the journey into the Red Sea. There's a few friends of mine doing a bit of fishing. There's quite a lot of fish in the Great Lakes. Very easy to catch. There they are getting up steam now, setting sail to the car. We're on the way to Aden. And here we are now, we're in Aden, we're tying the ship up to the docks in Aden and going ashore now. Aden, uh, there's a free city in there, so there's a free port. There was no tax, no duty, no nothing. Goods are extremely cheap. And we pack up the spirit on our neck, an old extinct volcano. We are having an ice cold lager after our hard work on deck. The my mates. Well, we're going to do a bit of shopping. This is where I bought the camera that filmed this. There's the uh, British Navy. And that's me. Out in the sun. Over 100 degrees of temperature. And we 
getting ready now to sail. We're going across the Red Sea to Africa, French to East Africa, a place called Djibouti. We're visiting the doctors now to get injections against all the diseases that you can get in Africa. Because in those days, they were even worse than they were today. You see uh, the wealthy modern cars, and then you see the pony and trap of the poor, or donkey and trap. They're riding on a lorry now, the back of a lorry, that's what they have to travel to go to the doctors. And um, we now arrived in Kuwait to load up the arm. This was on a different ship. This was on the British Destiny. This is a place called Mina Alamadi. It's a place that was set on fire by Saddam Hussein during the Gulf War. We weren't allowed to go into the town of Kuwait. It was too dangerous, but we did go uh, to the Siemens Club in the, in the docks. There's our ship, the British Destiny. There's one of my shipmates, doing a bit of posting, the back end. I've now uh, rise in rank to EDH. I've passed my qualifications and uh, I'm now able to navigate and steer the ship. There's a couple of apprentices working on deck. He's getting on with his painting there. There's a couple of engineer apprentices coming in there. You can see it's very hot. They've been down the boiler room where it's very hot. And now we're there on our going to to the Kent Siemens Club in Lima. Rather, some lava. There you see the six million dollar man in the hurry to get there. up the top of that mast shortly. And uh, here comes the crew staggering back after knocking back eight to ten points. Please <coughs> note that I wasn't there, I was on board. And there's the officers staggering back as well. Night, the bowling alley there. And 
we were all back on board the next morning, getting ready to set sail for India. Because we're on the, on the west coast, we have to go down around Cape Horn. And we got into a hurricane going around Cape Horn. It was the worst weather I ever experienced. The only, uh, the only other time we had bad weather was when we went down to the Antarctic, to the Falkland Islands in South Georgia. The waves are 40 foot high. The ship is playing through them and it's breaking over the top of the ship. And uh, we've arrived in Bombay now. And we're in for repairs because of the damage that was done to the ship during the hurricane. This is Bombay City which has changed its name and changed it out of all proportion to what it was when I was there. There was uh, less traffic around. Most, most of the vehicles on the road were either trams, buses or taxis. And rickshaws and carriages. There's a uh, fishing boat. And there you see hawks circling around. Roaches looking for food, jetsam that's run over from the ships, waste food. It's preparing to set sail now. We're going to Osaka in Japan, and here we are at the docks in Japan. This is Osaka docks in Japan. There's a pleasure boat going by, towing a barge. Another barge, tug between the barge there. We've got a long shot of the docks. You see the derricks and cranes there. And they the ships. There's many container ships in those days. Lots of stuff were carried by barge. Now we're going ashore in <coughs> Osaka, passing through the docks where the ship buildings are working, welding the ships. And here we are at Osaka. Well, it's night time. You can see the neon lights in Osaka. not very bright. We didn't have the really fast film in those days to be able to shoot at night. The neon lights. Slightly different to the modern uh, Japanese lights. There we are in a taxi. Going back with the shopping centre here now. No neon lights, that's a cinema showing um, a new cinema process called Cinerama. It was a giant wide semicircular bamboo screen. And there you see Osaka Station, where we'll be catching the train to go to. Uh, Tokyo later on. We're going to show now how to meet my girlfriend. That's Kimmy. Kimmy K. We lived together for a month. 
There's a ferry boat going across to Brook Island. And we're traveling in the bus to go downtown now when I go up in the coast. You can see the still bum damage in Osaka. And me and Kimiko, or Kimiko and I, are now on the bullet train traveling to Tokyo to catch the plane to fly home. And you see Mount Fuji. And there's a great Buddha at Kyoto. And soon we'll be arriving at Tokyo Airport. And there we are, that's Tokyo Airport, that's slightly different today. And there's our airplane, the DC-10 four-engine propeller plane. Running down the runway, getting ready to take off for the UK. And there we go, we are up in the air now, looking down in Japan from the air. And, uh, We are flying on to the UK. And I see you see another plane going the other way, going to Tokyo. We're flying over an active volcano there. This, uh, <coughs> as you know, Japan is on the ring of fire for earthquakes and. Uh, Volcanoes. There's Mount Fuji from the air. And uh, we'll shortly be landing in the UK. Uh, where I'll be catching the train to go back down to Korea to Plymouth and then into Gunner Lake. But we are on a express train traveling down to the British countryside, filmed in slow motion. It only took a couple of seconds for that train to pass in real action time. As you will see when uh, I switch to normal motion. We're traveling down north into Somerset. We're already going to Wiltshire, here. And there's a local train from Plymouth to Manus Lake, taking me the last lap of the journey. Well, shortly I'll be traveling home to North Park Farm where I live. The train is very slow, it's quite a steep railway line one of the steepest in the country. I think only Snowden has a steeper barrel run. The most they could take was two coaches. And there we are back home. And it's my cat and my sister to welcome me home. And the pigeon we got out. Just a fellow in the other way. And Jerry the budgie. In the coach. Shortly they're going to have a fire display to welcome me home because I've been away for 13 months. It's unusual to be away more than 12 months. Now, uh, the, the maximum I think you can assume they can stay away now is 6 months and then they got to fly them home. There's uh, me playing with my brother. He's uh, <coughs> one of the few times that he was on and leave the same time as me because he was asleep in his work. He was always interested in making films and doing stunt work. Now he's rolling and shooting. That's my brother. Coming home. There's me, he's been out with him. And that's the end of the story. I hope that you were interested in seeing this. 
And I'd be pleased if anybody would contact me at Graceland, Tama Park, at fiscally.co.uk. The name is Edward Smith.
The name is Edith Smith.